Hello everyone, I'm Christy Lynn from Learning the Harp and today we're going to be talking about a moment of realization I had about harp therapy that I thought you would find interesting and that you could apply in your playing today. So some of you might know that the other day I had the opportunity to interview Edie Elkin for a video and she is a pioneer in the field of harp therapy and harp therapy training. Now if you didn't know that I had that opportunity, that might be because you're not following my Instagram or my Facebook or at Learning the Harp and also on my website learningtheharp.com I'm putting updates about this US harp expedition I'm doing at the moment making a lot of videos for this channel um, but anyway I was talking to Edie Elkin and we talked about what is harp therapy um, why is the harp itself so therapeutic and then we also found out a bit more about harp therapy training and what that entails. And along the way, I had the opportunity to try out playing Edie's therapy harp. So she put the harp on me, it has a strap and I got all comfortable and I started playing a few notes just to try out the harp and I played some really fast arpeggios. And then Edie said, that if I were playing therapeutic music, I need to play slower and leave more space in between the notes. So I tried that out, playing fewer notes, leaving a longer time for the notes to ring out before playing the next note. And it was so interesting to hear how the atmosphere of the music completely changed. And I would say the atmosphere in the room changed. I could immediately see how this kind of music would be more therapeutic than playing fast arpeggios, lots of notes. Um, and I thought that would be an interesting thing to tell you about, that this might be something you would want to try in your own playing. So I'm not a harp therapist, I'm not trained in this field at all, but I think that if you could try in your own playing, just playing fewer notes, fewer notes in the left hand, just keeping things really simple and letting those notes ring out for a while before you play the next few notes. Maybe you'll find that the atmosphere in the room changes and something different happens. Maybe you'll feel it's a bit more of a healing moment. Um, I've seen this in practice with some of my performances as well. I was talking to my sister Megan afterwards and she mentioned this particular song that I perform called If I Should Meet My Maker. And whenever I play that song, it really feels like something in the room changes, like suddenly people just breathe out and there's more space. Um, Edie talked about the space for, for people to feel held and like it's a healing moment. And Megan has always commented on that song, that something changes when I play it. And after we spoke to Edie, we realized maybe it's something to do with the fact that the accompaniment when I play that song, the accompaniment is really simple and there's a lot more space in the accompaniment. So I, without even knowing it, I incorporated something of the idea of healing harp music in that performance. Um, so if you're interested, I'll put a link down below where you can watch If I Should Meet My Maker and, and see whether, I don't think it will come across the same in a video because you've kind of got to get the experience of live music in the moment, um, but you'll see what I'm talking about. And I'd love to hear from you whether you experience something similar if you just try it at home. Um, and just to let you know, if you have any more questions about harp therapy that I haven't mentioned or that I didn't talk to Edie about, please let me know down in the comments. Let me know what do you want to know about harp therapy because along in my US expedition, I'm going to be meeting up with some more harp therapists along the way and I'll ask those questions for you and make a video about it. And I'd love to, to help you in any way that you'd like to know about harp therapy. I hope you're all doing well and I'll see you again in the next video. Bye!